Well, it's only been 24 hours since I've uploaded the BFC video and there's been some really good comments. Let's go through them and see how we can change the design. Utter nonsense, what a bad <coughs> Not to mention yet another bullshit <coughs> project that will never come to the table. Come real, it's the next episode. <laughs> No, but seriously, no, there has been some very good constructive comments that have come in. And let's go through them one by one and see how the design has actually changed through your valuable input. So, uh, what a bell... We've already covered that one. That's irrelevant. So the most common suggestion that you guys gave me was how is the copper pipe going to be held down? Well, initially I was going to use a double-sided thermal pads on each TP4056 chipset. And that was what was going to stick the pipe to the board. But through variation in the copper pipe, variation in the way it's going to be assembled, that is not a 100% firm way of fixing the pipe to the chip set. So from that feedback, what I've decided to do is create an actual retaining bracket, which is simply added on to the top disc. Um, the top disc does not have any major modifications. In fact, it has no modification because of this. It's just the addition of these copper pipe retaining brackets. Jason Hornby commented the fact that the power supply unit could get overheated. Well, Jason, this little extra change in the design is one for you. Thank you for that uh, invaluable comment. John Jackson came up with, I think, the most bleeding obvious one here is how do I get access to this uh, to the inside of the BFC? To be honest with you, I didn't really give that one much thought. I thought once it's assembled, tested, I don't really need to gain access to it. But on reflection, again, that is actually a very good point. So the bottom disc has been modified into an outer and an inner disc. The inner disc is the panel that will come off completely, which will allow you to get a gain access to most of the gubbins inside the BFC. Damien Dubost, uh, forgive me if I pronounce your second name incorrectly, but he's um, asked the question, how will you fill uh, the filling loop in the water cooling system? The straight answer is, I don't know, because this is all new to me. What I'm assuming is once it's all connected, you can fill it with a cooling liquid and that will run through the system and then I just top it up uh, as and when it drops the level. This is the very reason why I've made it accessible through the top disc so that I can keep an eye on the cooling system. It has a grub screw at the top which I can open up very easily and then fill it up basically. But what I have been toying with is should I use water or should I use something like an antifreeze? or something, something of another nature that would improve the transition of heat through the system. The other thing I want to add about the cooling system is that I haven't actually put in a heat exchanger in there. The main reason is because I just want to see how it works as it currently stands. But if I do notice that the actual system is still getting too hot by reading the digital readout, then I think it's simple enough to actually purchase a small heat exchanger and just add it into the system in line with the, with the piping. DTEC30 has commented on the variation in the power supply unit and it should really have a voltage uh, meter, a voltage reader on there. I think that's a brilliant idea and what I will do is I will include a voltage reader on top of the PSU uh, because the top disc of the unit is actually going to be transparent and I think that will make the whole system look beautiful because at the end of the day you put all this effort in and all the work has gone on in the internals of the BFC so why not show it off and see what it looks like. Well, that was a very short and uh, sweet episode again, but it was a great way to show the continuation of this design through this great hive nerd mind that we have in our community. So again, to all the people that made those constructive comments, thank you very much. For all the people that gave negative comments, it doesn't matter. And it seems to me the contention is, let's build this damn thing. So. I have actually already started 3D printing some of the components that are required for this machine. The acrylic sheets have arrived, so we're all quite excited about putting this together. Please feel free to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Feel free to leave comments, negative or positive. It's all appreciated at the end of the day. Looking forward to seeing you on the next episode.